YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird. And I'm Marley's mom. If you've been following along, you know that I've been teaching my mom how to knit and it has officially been one week since she's been knitting. And I figured we better check in with her and maybe <laughs> teach her something new now. So make sure she's still knitting. <laughs> that's right. And she has been knitting. She actually took her knitting and knit in public. So um, what made you do that? <laughs> well, because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to. And, uh, you know, you gave me such beautiful things to to take with me that I couldn't resist. And uh, her project bags, that's yep, what she's talking about. Yep, talk, I bag. gave her some Erin Lane bags, project bags. They're fantastic. Yes, they are. They're beautiful. So, so I took it and worked on it. And uh, I was actually at the doctor's office. And it was funny because he said, um, mentioned something about what was I making. And I, you know, I wanted to be so impressive. It's like, oh, wait, do you see? <laughs> I said, well, actually, I'm just learning. He said, oh, well, you look like you know what you're doing. And I was like, because hey, she had a great you teacher. You there know. you go. So, yeah, and then your dad goes, you know, it's making me nervous. Can you put that away? <laughs> okay, fine. Is he giving you a hard time about knitting? Actually, he did in the beginning, I think just because it was taking a little time away from our time together. Mm -hmm. You know, and because we're older and things, you know, he's, he kind of likes to have me. And uh, It's not a bad then, thing. No, no, not at all. But the thing is, I, I, I kind of have to be alone with my knitting now because I have to pay attention. And you know me, I can be a little scatterbrained, you know, five places <laughs> yeah. at once. Because we're moms. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. And... And so I have to, I have to just focus. And so now, before I come in another room to start cooking or whatever, he'll go, you through knitting? I'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm through for now. Okay. And then he'll strike up conversation, whatever. So it's kind of funny. So he's respectful of my knitting. <laughs> That's good. Even when I got upset, he, he uh, was respectful. That's a really great segue. Did you have trouble? I did. I did. I, I would, I would, you know, think I was doing okay and everything would look good. And then all of a sudden I, you know, I was just worried about counting stitches. I wasn't really worried about how they looked until I looked. I was like, oh my, I'd have four or five rows of junk. And and I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? So that's when I called you. <laughs> she like, FaceTimed. Okay, Marley, <laughs> here's what I've got. And she's like, oh, <laughs> how did you do that? I don't know, but tell me what to do. And a couple of times you weren't available and it just got ripped out. I was like, it's done. And uh, that's why I'm so good at casting on now because I've ripped off so much. I've got the cast down, down. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Cast on down. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But you still want to knit. I do. I do. As a matter of fact, that's what made me angry the last time when I had those mistakes. I started twice and I still had mistakes and it, I wasn't reading my stitches correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was just irritating me because I really wanted to knit. I mean, I was I was in the zone for knitting. That's what I wanted to do, and I was so irritated. And Allie was there, your daughter, mm -hmm. and she was knitting, and she's really great, and she's fast. And, and <laughs> when I told her, I said, I'm just gonna pull this out. She said, no, mom says you don't pull it out. And I guess she texted you and she said, did. it's an emergency, grandma's pulling it out. <laughs> she said, well, I was filming, and so I texted her, I was like, honey, I can't talk, I'll call you back. She goes, mom, it's an emergency, See, grandma wants to rip out and I was just like <laughs> how I was. cute is that I was like so done I was like so done and uh so I ended up just pulling it off and setting it aside. And I thought, oh, well. You know what I think is cool is my daughter, you know, I taught her how to knit. And of course, I'm, I've taught all my kids how to knit, but I haven't pressured them to knit. You know, I'm just like kind of whenever they want to. And it's, it's funny because she's watching you knit and she's like, well, I've got needles. I, I have some yarn. And she's good and she's so fast. And, you know, and then actually she made me a scarf like in a day. I With like, chunky yarn, you know. The, yeah, but still. No, I know. I want them to know. Scarf. Absolutely, but it's it's Red Heart Mixology it's yarn, which is really it's great. Beautiful. Um, but it's yeah, it's chunky yarn, and she's just you know what? She's talented. It's funny because she, she is, plays on she her is. phone. I feel like we're doing a vlog, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> she plays on her phone. She plays like um, design and dress up games. And so she dresses up these models and she'll show me, mom, do you see this outfit? So she kind of has that budding designer, designer, you know, bug mm -hmm. in her. Uh, mm -hmm. So who knows? Maybe, maybe I can pass it along. It would be really good. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's the next point of your lesson and I want to show you how to change colors. Okay. And the reason I want to show you how to change colors is because when we move on to fix mistakes it will be easy for you to see stitches and rows and such better as they're different colors so okay, we're going right, to learn right. how to change colors it's really easy to change colors and as I just told mom the reason I want her to change colors now is because in the next video which is all about fixing mistakes it will be easier for her 
That's where we're going to break out all my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be easier for her to fix her mistakes if she has colors every two rows. She'll be able to see where stitches are, and it just it just really helps. So if you know how to uh, change colors already, sit back, enjoy the video. You never know what there might be. <laughs> and if you don't know how to change colors, this will be really helpful for you. So oh, if man. you want to follow along with us, all we have done or all mom has done is she cast on 12 stitches. She did um, one row of knit and then she did several rows of stockinette and that's where we're going to jump in. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right, here we go. All right, so right here, Mom, we can see that you have some wonderful stockinette going on and just one row of garter, which is great, okay? You have a little mistake down here where you accidentally did a pearl or a knit or vice versa. It's one of those things. It, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Whoop, there it is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do is I'm going to switch colors. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn my work just as if I was getting ready to work it. And what row are you on? Are you on a knit row or a pearl no, row? It's a pearl row. Perfect. And you know that because? I see the pearls. Exactly. Perfect. The first rule in knitting that I want to tell you guys is that you never put a knot in your knitting. If you're going across your work and you need to, um, you know, tie on a new yarn or start a new color or whatever it may be, I do not want you to put a knot in it, okay? Because eventually, as you are wearing your sweater, if that's what you made, that knot will work its way out and go to the right side of your work, okay? So the first thing I want you to do here is put a knot in your knitting. <laughs> I know, oh, right? so it's okay. I know. It's okay now. Here's what's going on. I'm going to have mom change colors to this really pretty white color. But what I want her to do is we are just going to simply tie the white around her purple. So I have the purple just re resting right on top of the white here and I'm just going to tie it just like this, just like that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave a long tail because this is the tail I'm going to weave in later. But I can easily push this yarn right up to the edge of my needle. See how it's attached to the purple so I can just slide it right up to the edge of my, my needle. And I leave the purple attached. I'm not going to do anything with it, but I can just grab my white and start knitting with my white. Now, there are people who will not do this tie-on thing, but I think it's easier to have my yarn stabilized at some point. So that's why I tie mine on. Now, having said that, when my entire project is complete, I will go back then and untie this knot and weave in my end. So it is not a permanent knot. It is just there purely to make my knitting experience better. And I find it easier, especially for beginners, to have something stabilizing your yarn there. Because you already have a hard time when the first and last stitch is really loose. So without that stabilizing that, I mean, that stitch gets really huge, okay? Oh, I can't All right. Imagine. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and do this. And you'll see it's just real easy to undo because it's not a permanent knot. Oh, so you're not gonna just leave it and let me no, get started? No, you've gotta do it. Really? How often? You know. How many times in my life have you done something? Okay, now it's your turn. You undo the whole thing. I'm like, oh, really? All right, so here you are, and all you're going to do is you're going to tie on your new color. Okay, I'm going to sit back. There's no nudging today. I'm not nudging her. I don't want to fall off of my chair. I threatened her. Yeah, so perfect. She me. Yeah. So you didn't do anything with the purple. Did you guys see that? She didn't, you're fine. Oh. She didn't like take the white and then tie it with the purple. She just tied the white around the purple. But now it slides up and down the purple yarn. I'm not having her cut the yarn because we're going to have her carry up the purple the next time she comes back to it. That'll make sense here in a minute. So I'm gonna have you leave the purple down here. Behind, nope, just right down here. And I'm going to have you go ahead and I'm going to have you start this row. I'm going to have you purl because you're on pearls. Okay? Okay, let me remember. Pearls in front. And Whoa! That's okay. It's, <laughs> it's loose. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Slide. Now, when you grab your needle, hold on to your purple. Like, hold on to the purple with the needle just to kind of stabilize it so it just doesn't go anywhere yeah the tail and the purple perfect yeah yeah go I ahead that hand oh i forgot <laughs> i forgot you, you can't have that hand i I'm know i'm hand. sorry so the other hand how come it's through like two did i mess up yes take that out let's start again this way no no this way this way mm -hmm. gee have you ever done this before nope i'm new <laughs> holy mackerel. there you go okay around perfect 
So as you see, what mom's doing, she's holding with her opposite hand the tail, so which would be the tail of the white and the um, purple yarn that's just kind of hanging out, just so that they're not willy-nilly and um, flopping around. And she's just carrying on and she's purling with her white. Perfect. You're doing a good job, Mom. I just feel so herky-jerky. That's yeah. okay. It's because you're on camera. Everybody's watching you. Uh, you know, thousands I, I wish of I people. could say that's only it, but that's not it. I'm herky-jerky if I'm alone. While she's purling, I'm going to take this moment and say, why don't you guys go ahead and smash that like button right now. Let's see if we can get the likes on this video, like up over 200 before the next video is released. What do you say? Let's do that. It's fun. Hit like. You like us, don't you? <laughs> right? <laughs> like watching Marley's mom get so... <laughs> I think yeah. it's funny because since we've released the, the first couple videos, our entire family is first off shocked that mom is knitting. Um, how many times has dad asked you, you really like that, do you? You really do like that. You really do like that. It's okay. kind of funny to me. Um, it's not like he hasn't seen me knitting my forever, forever. you know. Right. But even this weekend we had family over and my brother asked her, you know, you really like knitting? Yeah, I really do. So then, of course, my brother wants to get in front of the camera, and now my sister's like, well, of course y'all do that after we leave, and so now she wants to get in front Everybody of the camera. Everybody wants to be Marley's mom. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's it. <laughs> so we have Mike, Mike, Mike Wednesday. Mike, Mike, Mike Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Tell him he doesn't get to do any more unless he starts knitting. Oh, he should. He would he's, be good. He would be good. Oh, but he's so anal. Gosh, he would be a mess. <laughs> he would be a mess. Well, he doesn't watch this channel, so he won't know. <laughs> That's right, Mike. I never said that. Mike, Mike, Mike. You're Mike, the best. Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> all right, so you finished your row, and you're turning your work. And the first thing I want you to notice is that all of the stitches on your needle now are white. Okay, mm -hmm. so this will be really helpful if you are if you have a tendency to turn your work and then pull your work up like your pearl bump up, because you would notice oh wait a minute I have a, a random purple on there, but because right, exactly that. exactly I do that all mm -hmm. the time all the time right, and we're going to be doing two row striping so she went down one row and we're going to go back this row okay so that she's just completing two rows so I'm knitting this row this row you're going to knit. What that's going to do is every time she gets back to the side of her work where the other yarn is hanging out for her, it's just over there waiting, she knows it's time to change colors. So typically you would change colors on a knit row, but she had just finished her knit row, getting ready to start a purl row, so why not? Let's just go ahead and start on the purl row. I just thought, you know, let's just do it. So she's going to get to the end of this row, and when she turns let's her work, just let's way. just do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... Uh, at the end of this row, her purple yarn is just hanging out there, right? It's just two rows below the, the, the yarn is. So what's going to happen is we're going to drop the white and we're going to pick up the purple from two rows below, carry it up the side and start knitting with the purple. Yes, that's going to leave a really small float as it floats beyond those two rows of white that we completed, but it's not that big of a difference. It's not going to make that big of a deal. Um, in the total project. So there are a lot of times when you're just doing one row or two rows striping, you'll see in the pattern that it tells you not to cut the yarn every time, just to carry it up the side. And this is what you would do. You wouldn't have to carry the yarn. Rule of thumb, or my experience has been, anything more than four rows, you would typically cut your yarn and rejoin and go along. You wouldn't carry it up. You don't wanna have a float that that's long. But two rows, sometimes four rows, it's totally okay. So let's show them where you are. You're at the end. Perfect. I was wondering if you were going to catch that. <laughs> so she always my worst. Yeah, she always tries to tighten it up by pulling that pearl bump up, but it's all right. So what you're going to do here, mom, it looks good. You're going to drop the white. So you're just going to let it hang down there, and you're going to pick up the purple. Okay. And when you pull the purple up from the two rows below, you want to be very careful not to pull it too snug otherwise you're gonna scrunch it right you want to if if you're let's pretend on this if your two rows was this 
was this long, okay, and this is your string down here, you would want your string to just be that, those two rows. You wouldn't want to squish those up like this to make it super tight. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as your string is down here and you're purple and you're bringing it up to start knitting again, you wanna make sure it still allows these two rows to be that height. That's all good in theory, but tell my fingers that when I come over here. That's all right, it, it's, it's gonna take practice. Okay, what so was... I see pearls. Perfect. So I'm going to pearl. Exactly. And I'm curling with this on this side of my... Nope, not the white. No, it's not towards... Oh, that's right, because I, I almost did white. Uh-huh. Okay, so this side... There we go again. Perfect. All, all thumbs. Mm-hmm, that's okay. In the beginning. It's all right. And how do I tighten Don't that? Don't worry about that right Don't now. Don't worry about that right nope. now. You heard her. Don't worry about that right Don't now. Don't worry about that. So when she starts chewing me out... <laughs> More than... No. First and last row... Or that first and last one, one thing I do want you to work on though is instead of pushing your stitches, remember, yeah, or you you try you start to extend your stitch a little bit oh, and try and like shove that. off one. Oh, yeah, okay. I want you to to naturally start to get in a rhythm to move up your stitches. It actually will be easier once we switch to a different pair of needles. Remember, I started you off with these needles because they tend to grab your yarn a little bit and not allow your stitches to fall off so easy. Mm -hmm. I think the Crystallite needles by Susan Bates are really good starter needles because they grip the yarn a little bit and they make it so that it's a little difficult for stitches to accidentally fall off. But as you start getting more and more comfortable and you want that slip and slide a little bit so you can play with the stitches and move them on and off the needle, um, or not on and off, but up and down the needle. It's nice to um, transfer over either to the aluminum needles <laughs> or the silver line needles, whatever it may be. Um, something that's a little bit more slick. Oh, you started knitting. Oh, there you go. You almost knit that one. I just that's, wanted to catch you. You catch that. You didn't think so? <laughs> She's all, nope. You didn't see that. Who did that? Nothing to see here. <laughs> These are not the stitches you're looking I for. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good catch there right? by not double knitting that one or never double purling. Happened. Never happened. <laughs> Perfect. Good job, Mom. So you're at the end. You have all purple Every time stitches. I'm like, oh, I can do <laughs> you have all purple stitches. Yeah, that's still same thing that's that okay. One. I'm not worried about that. Right. It's going to be okay. How cool is that? Does that look neat so far? Yeah. All right. So finish this next row, and then we're going to take a look at that side a little bit more. So this is going to be a, a, a purple one. You're still on purple, because purple's the only color you have down there. Right. Perfect. Oh, I don't have, See? Any, I don't have white anymore. Nope, it's on the other side. It's on the other side. You're going to go okay. back to it. And I have knit here, so I'm going to knit. Perfect. Exactly. Good job. Okay. Oh, you split that yarn. I did? You have the split the white. See the oh, white? son so, of a gun. All right, yeah, that's a good idea. Back and take it out. And... Okay, now here's the thing. Hold on a minute. You put that stitch. Nope, nope, nope. You don't want that white. Get out of the white. <laughs> okay. That's the next segment that teaches me what to do, right? That's right. So I'm just going to fix oh, it right now. Okay. There great. we go. Thank okay. You. Now Thank just you. knit it. Okay. The next video will be all about mistakes, and you'll understand what I just did. <laughs> I'm not going to muddy the water right now, okay? <laughs> there It'll you go. be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got plenty of mistakes. You know what? It'll be liberating because you'll be able to understand how to fix those mistakes that you make. You won't have to rip out every time. Oh my gosh. It will be good. You just get so desperate. It's like, I know. You know? You know, it takes practice. It just takes practice. I had I had a, a knitter in one of my knit net classes and let, let's call her Jackie, okay? For two weeks, my knit net classes used to be four weeks long, and it was twice a week for four weeks. And for two weeks, watching Jackie knit was painful. I mean, she was herky jerky. Just it was just really hard to watch her. She's actually the only student that I ever almost said, you know, this might not be for you. Only one, okay, in fifteen plus years. And the thing is, Jackie came back week three, and all of a sudden she was fluid. It was natural. Her stitches were nice and clean. Everything, it was just beautiful. Like, it didn't look like the same person, right? And I, I said to her, I said, what happened? And she said, between, she can remember that between one stitch and the next, all of a sudden it was like a light bulb went off in her head and she was just, she just understood what she was doing and her hands all of a sudden just did everything really naturally and it just clicked, you know? 
Now, she is all about Fair Isle. She not only does, you know, beautiful Fair Isle work, but she holds the yarn one color in each hand. And she, she's knitting like this. Like, she's crazy knitter. Amazing knitter. So, for me, personally, that was actually a big testament to the whole, you know, it, it's just sticks and string. You just have to have the desire to want to do it. And, and the patience to get there. Because eventually your hands will get that muscle memory. And, and you know, I, I'm you, still waiting for that light to come on. <laughs> no, but you have the desire. So that's No, I do. That's I, I want to learn. Yeah. yeah. That's really yeah. awesome. So you're doing really great, Mom. You so really are. Now do we move on to a white? Right. But I'm going to have you set oh. it down and let's take a look at it. Okay. So we're looking at the wrong side of her work or the, the pearl side of her work, okay? And you can see here the color changes. It's like, well, wait a minute. Why does it look like the colors are kind of muddied together, right? They, they have blue bleeds is what it kind of looks like because one row bleeds into the next row. Well, that's absolutely perfectly normal for a pearl side of color work. When you change from one color to the next, you're going to get those kind of color bleeds. But on the right side of the work, you'll oh, notice right. you don't have any color bleeds. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have two really even rows. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat of white and then two rows of your purple. So if you were doing something where you purposely wanted these color bleeds to show up on the public side of your, your sweater, you could make this kind of stitch, this reverse stockinette, that's what it's called, mm -hmm. where the pearl side is the right side of your work, mm -hmm. be the right side of your work and that's what the world would see. Um, sort of like today how the reverse side of Fair Isle is actually very popular. You know those long floats? And those people are wearing that stuff on the outside instead of the inside. It's just it's just fashion. It just goes around. But this is not you're not doing anything incorrect. That's my point of saying this. Because people will do this and they're like, well, wait a minute, this doesn't look right. Right. This is the way it's supposed to look. Okay? And this is the way this is supposed to look. You're doing it absolutely correct. Okay? So once again, you're down here at the side where your other color is waiting for you. So you would pick up your next color and carry it up and start purling with your white, okay? If you were doing this with three colors, okay, what you could do is you could go down with one color and you'd have, let's say, green down here waiting. You'd come back and you'd have white. So you'd go back down there and you'd have your purple down there. Like you could do one row with three and whatever color on the other side is waiting for you would be your next color. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the decision of do I float my yarn from two rows below or four rows below up to the next row or do I cut my yarn, it's sort of a decision, it's a personal decision. Um, at the same time, it's one that des the designer tells you. If she tells you to cut it, there has to be a reason she tells you to cut it. Even if you're like, but wait, I want to float it up. Who knows? Cut the yarn, okay? If the designer tells you to do it, do it. But if there's not, you know, directions one way or the other, you have to make that decision. If this is a piece that's going to be worn out in public, um, not out in public, that's not the right way to say it. If, if it's a, a scarf, okay, it's a striped stitch scarf, and you're floating the yarn up and you're like, you know what, I'm going to, well, you're going to have this big string hanging out the side of your scarf. You're inevitably going to snag it on something, probably not your best idea. You should cut that yarn and weave it in. Does that make sense? But if it's two rows or even four rows, you can get by with that. However, say it's, it's a sore sweater and your side is going to be cut into or going to be tucked into a seam, you could always carry it up at that point, eight rows, because that's, that float is going to be tucked into the seam. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's how you would decide whether you cut or carry your yarn. Um, your homework is actually going to be just do, continue on doing two row striping, okay? I'm gonna have you two and two, two and two, two and two, because I want you to have several rows going before we jump in to do mistakes, fix mistakes. Oh, so you, you don't mind if I make a few mistakes? Not at all, okay. absolutely not, absolutely not, <laughs> all right? Well, now you heard her. <clears throat> no, okay, so here we are. All of you at home, what I would like you to do, if you wanna practice this and be ready for the Fixing Mistakes video, go ahead, cast on 12 stitches and work in two by two stripes over stockinette, okay? It's really important, I want you to do stockinette. I want you to do, um, let me give you specific instructions. Do the long tail cast on and cast on 12 stitches. Knit one row. Then I want you to go ahead and jump into purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, knit a row. 
to work stockinette. By knitting that first row, that will give you one row of garter stitch, so that way the bottom of your work doesn't start to curl, okay? Because as we knit along in stockinette stitch, stitches start to curl. So I want you just to have that one row of garter stitch. Does that make sense? Do several uh, inches. Do at least, like, so your whole swatch is maybe six inches of two by two stripes, okay? Once you have that, you would be ready to get started on the Fixie Mistakes video, and we'll jump in and I will show you how to pull out your needles and put your stitches back on a needle, how to understand the orientation of your stitches as they're resting on your needle, how to drop down a stitch to fix it, so pick it up and put it back up as a knit, put it back up as a purl, put it back up as a garter stitch, um, so that you understand all of these little mistakes. This is, this is gonna be really liberating. I'm telling you, it really is. Once you know how to fix these mistakes, it, it's like, oh, okay, I'm not so stressed out, I can do this, okay? Right, right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this video on how to do stripes. Go ahead and do your striping homework and we will get ready for some fixing mistakes. Are you ready? That's I not am. so bad, right? I am. No, no, no. So you just need to tell everybody that if they make a few mistakes while they're striping, that's better yeah. because we'll be working Absolutely. That out. Yeah. And I won't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. If you happen to make some mistakes in your striping, just be like, I'm an overachiever. I'm getting ready for my next lesson. Well, Marley's mom made like five pros, so, you know. <laughs> I do want to tell you guys, we are loving watching all of your progress. Uh, many of you oh, yeah. are working along with us as I'm teaching my mom how to knit, and you're taking pictures of swatches and sending it via Facebook and saying, I'm learning how to knit with Marley and, and Marley's some of mom. It looks fabulous. We, I mean, it's fun. It's like, mom Mom really? is not on Facebook, and so I will show her, and she gets all excited. And so we love your comments, and we love you showing um, all your stuff on Facebook, and we love that you're sharing these videos with your friends, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for us or things you would like me to teach mom how to do, uh, I would love to hear that. Oh, be so, careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could be really bad. Just leave your comment <laughs> below, and uh, I'll be sure to answer it the best I can. Don't forget to smash that like button and uh, hit subscribe so you're up to date whenever there's a video released. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and this is Marley's mom. We're so glad you're here with us. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Actually, that sparkle looks really cool. I told you. I thought it was hair right there. Oh, oh my, my gosh.